PBL is really cool. We get to like make games and do all of our work based on projects rather than just like sitting and doing bunches of worksheets. We get to do creative projects that help us learn on different subjects. I guess. Well, first we wrote a story, and then we kind of like created it in um, like a video game. And what I'm almost done doing is I'm coding buttons so when the little characters touch them, they'll go on to the next level. Like. Making is learning, not just for the kids, uh, and, and they pick up amazing things, and they actually develop emergent behaviors when you don't like plan everything or have them write down everything as a prerequisite to like do anything. But making is learning for teachers who get to watch and to see what comes up. And once you kind of become habituated to letting kids make things and talk about what they've made, I don't know, you, you look at different forms of composition differently. You no longer think there's a hierarchy with writing at the top or reading at the top. You think that you know there are all these multiple pathways and that sometimes writing, reading can inform these other pathways or be good starting points, endpoints, checkpoints, points for feedback, but it's not like the only way or the privileged way. So if, if we include writing, it's often for something like planning or reflection, something purposeful around making. And in fact, I found my most resistant writers don't really have a problem after they've been given the chance to make something, to talk about it, or to write about it. And then the next time they have less of a problem planning because they, they trust that they're going to make something and that I'm going to value it, their classmates are going to value it. And it, it really is what we do. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't feel like a cheat because it's not like five days of writing, oh, here's your day for making it. Like whatever they write beforehand or afterwards in terms of reflection, however long the project takes them, if it's quality work to them, if they value it and it's coming along, um, we really try hard not to short circuit it. So the making can take up and, and really own the central place of their learning, whether it's with cardboard or programming or painting, um, another kind of sculpture, whatever. It doesn't have to be any one thing. Um, the writing becomes a way, I don't know, to complement it. And it doesn't become a way to kind of boss kids around through the activity. One of the neat things I think about digital making, especially with the way we approach it, uh, which is through raw coding HTML and then learning a little CSS and, and Java, is the immediacy of the feedback. Mm -hmm. Like kids quickly learn to kind of spot bugs. And we start with making blank web pages. So it's really easy to spot if something's going wrong because if anything is showing up in the browser, you know, you've got to go back to your code and, like, tweak something. And it feels really efficacious and powerful to make something from nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really what I think the future of schooling should be like. It should be a, a, a workshop and a dev blog. It, it should be a studio space. It shouldn't be um, this kind of atomized, walled-off series of uh, decontextualized experience kids have. And you don't need to, like, get rid of teachers. You don't need to get rid of content knowledge. You just need to, like, bring them together. You know, the more caring adults in a room uh, who are able to help kids with multiple forms of composition, the, the more trust and competency there's going to be in that learning community. You know, you don't have to, like, get rid of the people and the stuff that counts. You just need to think about the artificiality of some of the structures we consider to be schooling and understand that they're not necessarily what we consider to be learning anymore. Mm -hmm.